Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Pendiment. So in the last episode we had a reunion with the Gertner family after seven years of being gone out of Tassing. And then we went to the library of the Abbey to buy some uh, books from Mother Illuminata, because they are pretty much closing down the library, because they don't have the time to maintain it anymore. But anyway, we bought one book for Klaus's daughter, uh, the guy who lives here, the printing press guy. So we bought one book for his daughter. It was a Christian uh, romance novel or something, I think. But then we found something else interesting. We found a partly burned book that was written in the same handwriting than those secretive, mysterious notes that were given to all the suspects of the Baron's murder. So whoever wrote that book also wrote the uh, notes, obviously. And now we're about to enter uh, Klaus's house, the trucker's house, and have some uh, dinner there. And after that, um, I'm not sure. I don't think that we have any... We don't have any arrangements or any places to go after this, so we'll see where we go after that. So, without further ado, let's go and have some dinner, or is it lunch? Huh, who, who are these people? I haven't seen them before. Magdalene, yeah, that was the daughter's name. So we are gonna give this uh, book to her. Not that, she, not that she can read yet, but in the future. So, hi, Cla uh, hi Klaus. <coughs> Excuse me. You're back. Good. We're almost ready to sit down to eat. Would you and Kaspar care to join us? Well, that's why we are here. Of course. Thank you, Klaus. So who are these two? Welcome back, Andreas. Kaspar. Andreas, these are my friends. Benjamin and Rachel... I... Uh, Summerfeld. They are on their way back to Prague. Well, I know what Prague is. It's a city. An imperial city of the Holy Roman Empire. The city's mint made it a hub for German and Italian bankers and merchants. And its university became a gathering place for many Reformation thinkers. Oh, really? Good day. Hello. Excuse me for not getting up. It's a bit difficult. Oh, she's pregnant, I see. I was thinking that her belly looks kind of big. Of course, I understand. It's nice to meet you both. Hello. Oh, isn't she cute? Hello. That sounded like a real word, Klaus. She's learning more of them every day. She'll be reading before long. That's a wonderful... ...sake to the gift that I have brought her. Sake, I don't know what that word means. Oh. Consider it a small apology. A book from the Abbey Library. When's her birthday? Well, consider it a small apology. Well, all right. Let's see this small apology. Here you are. Parsifal. I'm sure she'll love this. I hope she does. It might make some good bedtime reading un until she can read it on her own. Thanks for this. It's a nice thought. We should probably pray before we eat, assuming the Summerfelds don't mind. Not at all. We are accustomed to being guests in Christian homes. Thank you for asking, Klaus. Alright, I lit the prayer then. What, are they not Christian? Bless us, O Lord, and these your gifts, which we are about to receive from your bounty. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Um. <laughs> so, what do we have today? Klaus, thank you again for letting us stay here. It's been such a long trip. Oh. Is it time? Not now, we are eating. Ah, no, I'm fine. I think I'm just sore everywhere. Oof. Anyway, we had hoped to get home uh, weeks ago, but the fighting has made it slow progress from Basel. Fighting. What fighting? It's not the Thirty Years' War yet. That started... Not 1518, 1618. Is your home in Prague? Basel? Tassing is, is hardly on the way to Prague. Has the fighting come close? Hmm. Yeah, what fighting are we talking about? Close enough. If we can hear the drums or see the armies, it's too close for me. Rachel being pregnant complicates things, of course. 
quite understandable. It's better to be cautious than full of regret. Hmm, yeah. It's lucky timing for me though. Now I have two printers and a master artist at my dinner table. True. It isn't all misfortune. Daddy? Oh yes, thank you. And a future printer and, and baby printer to be. Tassing hasn't seen this many artists under one roof in a while. It's amazing to see how far printing has come so quickly. Some of the engravings I have seen are, are, are incredible. What have you been working on in Prague? Well, the skills for printing and painting are not that similar. Well, let's just say that some of the engravings I have seen are incredible. And new techniques, new types, new styles are being developed every year. Benjamin is, is trying to create a more readable script for Jitish. Jitish. We have typefaces for Hebrew, but it would be nice to have something separate for Jitish. How novel. That could be useful for printing parallel text translations of the Bible. I hadn't thought of that, though our women read y Yiddish and they don't study scripture. Yet. Eh, don't let Rabbi Hayot hear you say that. Rabbi? Oh, so they are Jewish. Okay. I would like our writing to be more ac accessible, especially to those who only read Yiddish. Okay, so this is Yiddish, I take it. Yeah, something like this. I'll be sure to send you some samples when you when when I'm finished, Klaus. Good, I would like the No oh, what? Off I'm a... Yes, I'm fine. You sure about that? Klaus, what are you working on? I need to get ready to sell to travelers as the pass is open, but lately I have been printing the 12 articles for the town. 12 articles. Oh hey, it's good job, Magdalene. Thanks to Father Thomas, everyone in town can read at least well enough to make it uh, through the sheet. It's got a lot of people talking, and a lot are coming over to Otto's way of thinking. Hmm, why is the text not being uh, written anymore? And I don't hear any sounds of the, uh, you know, the pen writing on paper. Well, anyway. Well, you heard him yourself, Andreas. What do you think of what's happening in Tassing? Oh, there we go. It's just not... It's just not uh, with him. Oh, yeah, because because this text has been uh, pressed on the paper and not written, unlike ours. I mean, he is a printing presser, so, so it makes sense. Anyway, I think the abbot is in difficult position and he's just trying to find a way through it. The abbot's always been an ass. What do you expect? Well, yeah, that's kind of true. Of course, if Ottilia Cambrian hadn't been killed for the Baron's murder, the abbot would have taken her house anyway. Yeah, that's true. How convenient that she was convicted as the murderer. Yeah, I suppose that's true. Sorry, not trying to bring up bad memories. I was just trying to say that things have been hard on the peasants for years. It's just gotten worse lately. If the abbey is in such a bad state, there must be someone the abbot can appeal to for more money. Who? The Pope? Yeah, I was actually thinking about the Pope as well. The Duke of Bavaria may lend him military aid, but money is unlikely. And he could try to sit down with Otto and uh, work something out. This is the problem with mixing temporal and religious authority. Can we read about the Duke of Bavaria? We don't know what he looks like. The title is held jointly by two brothers, Louis X and William IV. Both are working to suppress the peasant revolts. Of course they are. Well, since we, since we have studied theology, this is the problem with mixing temporal and, and religious authority. It does seem that these problems are affecting lords across the empire, abbots or otherwise. Right, this is a problem with the abbot acting as lord. He can't hide behind his habit and say this is Christian behavior. 
Okay, finally we can eat. Apple pie, that sounds nice. White bread. Yeah, let's take some pie. We are sympathetic to what's happening here. We saw it all throughout Swabia. Peasants are suffering. It's true, but I worry about what will happen in Tassing. P. Ow! I'm fine. Peasants are no match for the soldiers of the Swapian League. Swapian League, huh? The Swapian League was a military group maintained by the three imperial cities of the Holy Roman Empire. Members included nobles, knights, and hired or retained mercenaries. What is the Swapian League? Well, we just read about it. Soldiers of the Swapian nobility meant to keep peace in the empire. Mercenaries, soldiers for hire, they rally they rally for coin, not for cause. Well that's actually kinda true. Bastards who think they can crush people for the crime of standing up for themselves. Hmm. Well they this league does have both nobles and mercenaries, but I think I'm gonna lean towards mercenaries. Soldiers for hire, they rally they rally for coin, not for cause. We can't speak to their motives, as we tried to stay far from them, but they were intimidating even at a distance. If the peasants aren't careful, Tassin could draw the wrong sort of attention. I know that Otto and the peasants are taking a risk, but I believe Otto will keep things peaceful. Maybe Otto will, but what about Martin? Anyway, it's not the Swabian League we have to worry about, but the soldiers of the Duke of Bavaria. Bavaria. Not quite, dear. The Prince Bishop has the Church's authority, but the Duke's lands surround Tassing and Kersau. Oh, quite a few options here. Klaus, I'm sorry for showing up yesterday without, uh, without writing. You had every right to be angry. Klaus, I wanted to apologize for never writing back. I was so caught up in work, you know how it is, and I never got around to it. Klaus, I'm sorry for never writing back. What happened here in Tassing at Kiersau, I just wanted to forget it. Klaus, I'm sorry for what happened to your family, and I'm sorry I never wrote, I never wrote back. Hmm. What happened to his family again? I don't see the wife anywhere, so maybe their wife just passed away? Well, I'm sorry for what happened to your family, and I'm sorry I never wrote back. That's it. I'm sorry. Uh. Oh, we got some mushroom pottage. Okay. He didn't reply back. Ah. Pfft. Ow. Oh, this is it. This is it. What, it's coming out? Oh no, I, I was afraid of this. We can't travel now. This is all my fault. We should have left uh, Passer earlier. I love you, Benjamin, but be quiet. I don't care. I need help. Yes, we need a midwife. Is there one who would accept Rachel? Agnes Steinauer. Uh, she's a Tussing's midwife. I could fetch... I could fetch Dr. Stoltz. Um, she's Tassing's midwife. Well, I guess we go with Agnes. Uh, who was Agnes again? Oh, her, yeah. Uh, Lucky's wife. Yeah, let's just go and fetch her. Could you get her? Klaus? Yes, I should get her. Agnes has delivered every child in Tassing as long as I can remember. Okay, good thing that I chose her. She would never turn any woman, uh, any woman away. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Klaus. You are a mensch. I don't know what that means. It must be a Jewish word. Enough with the thanks. Get me the wit mid midwife. Women are really scary when they're about to give birth, aren't they? Yes. Andreas, you are forgiven. Kaspar, it was uh, good to have you over, but you both have to leave. Thank you, Klaus. Good luck, Rachel. Eh, thank you. And thank you. I'll need it. I'll go fetch Agnes. 
Thank you for joining us, Andreas. Oh, I almost forgot. You should go see the bonfire preparations in the town commons. Bonfire, huh? You missed them on your last visit. Klaus! I'm going. Thank you, Klaus. We'll be going. Take care. And time passes. Okay, preparing the bonfire. Now let's see, do we have anything else that we should be doing? Now let's see. I sample upon one with handwriting that matches the notes I discovered here in 15, uh, 1518. The writing in this book is not the is not in the same curious purple pe purple ink, but the hand is unmistakable. Yeah. I should go to the commons to see the town's preparations for St. John's Eve. Okay. Hmm, okay. Well, I guess we go to the town commons then. So, this way. Oh, it's basically like the Midsummer Festival. Everyone seems to be working hard for their bonfire tonight. The commons looks festive, decorated like this. Look at all the flowers, master. And the bonfire is huge. Yeah, it's kind of like our Midsummer Festival. How's the fire coming? Those logs work out all right for you, uh, Andres. Coming along as expected. It's all in place, Otto. Good, good. Alright, everyone. Remember, after the bonfire tonight, we celebrate as usual. We will all gather in the woods and the women will collect herbs as traditional demands. As tradition demands, even. Otto, the abbot has forbidden harvesting in the forest. Of course they have. Please, for everyone's sake, reconsider your actions. Thank you, father. But the abbot's order goes against God's law. The forest belongs to all of us, as to all its game and fowl and fish. He cannot claim ownership over the which the Lord gave us to hold in common. No, I'm sorry, father. We'll proceed as planned. Tassing has never let any uh, anything get in the way of our Saint John's customs, as long as I can remember. <clears throat> Excuse me. We won't start now. And remember, tomorrow I will show you proof that as sure as the sun turns round the earth, God and our saints are with us. Ah, hello, brother Wojtyłow. Good day, Andreas. Hello, brother Wojtyłow. You look upset at Otto's announcement. Is everything all right? Otto is becoming more aggressive in his defiance of the abbot. Father Kernot will not take take this news well. The abbot doesn't like the festivities? Well, who's telling? How could the abbot stop them? He can't exactly ch chase them all out of the woods himself. The abbot doesn't like festivities? Oh, the bonfire is fine. I look forward to it every year, and the festival is wonderful. But willfully antagonizing the abbot by gathering herbs against his order? I'm afraid this won't end well. His order. Did you just hear of Father Thomas Andreas? The abbot declared the woods off limits. Anyway, it's not for me to say. I'm sure the abbot will tell you more. He sent me with an invitation for you to dine with him tonight. Oh really? Okay. I'm sure the father will want to discuss the situation over supper. Of course I'll attend. Thank you, Brother Wojtyłow. Well, I suppose I can attend. You're kidding. What does the abbot think uh, he can pray out of me now? Well, we don't have any other plans, so we might as well. Does the invitation extend to Kaspar as well? I'm sorry, Andreas, but Father Abbot has asked you to come to his house alone. Phew. Please tell the abbot I'll see him this evening. Well, I guess I'll see what all the fuss is about. I'll meet you back at the guest house after dinner, all right? Can I help set up the festival decorations while you are with the abbot? Yes, but be back but be back before sundown, all right? Yes, thank you, master. I'll see you later. Casper is such a good boy.
Now do we go to the Abbot's house already? Meet meet the Abbot for supper. Well, let's look at this first. So they're having some sort of a ritualistic dance. One has a potato sack on her. One has a basket. Third one has some leaves or reefs or something. And yeah, <laughs> that one looks kind of spooky. Looks like a ghost. Uh, Brigitte, can we talk to her? Hello, Andres. I guess not. Hello, Till. Hello, Master Muller. Andres. This bonfire is much simpler than the one in Nuremberg, but it's pretty old. This, but it's uh, pretty, mu pretty much all the same. So they cele so they celebrate this in in the city as well, and not just in the in the uh, in the country. Oh, look at that! Isn't that a happy uh, happy sight? Otto and his wife. Uh, what was her name again? Eva, Eve, I think, and their child. Werner, that's the... Oh, is that the doctor? I thought his name was Stolch. Okay, well, let's not keep, keep the abbot waiting, I guess. So, at his house here. Oh, there he is. God bless you, Andreas. I'm glad to see you received my invitation. Are you ready to eat? Yes. Good. Andreas, welcome back to Kersau. He seems rather happy to see us. I didn't think that we left that good impression on him the last time we were here seven years ago. Uh, thank you for having, uh, having me, father. I'm pleased you accept my invitation. I know you are a busy man. Come, sit down and let's pray. Bless us, O Lord, and these your gifts, which we are which we are about to receive from your bounty. Lord, direct each of us here uh, toward your wisdom, prudence, and guidance in our future actions. To Christ our Lord, Amen. Amen. Well, this looks fancy. Thank you for joining me, Andreas. It appears you have done very well for yourself, Andreas. I hope you remember your time at Kiersau fondly. Ah, oh, he's kissing our ass, basically, now that we are rich and famous and successful. Basically, like with Baron Lawrence Rottvogel. Anyway, you look well suited to your profession and fame. How have you been faring since your stay here? The city council did approve me as a master artist in Nuremberg, you'll be pleased to hear. I have a commission of Mary and Christ waiting for me in Nuremberg, but my patron wants to keep adding more of his associates in. I'm dreading going back to it. Or we have our uh, unique background option. I traveled to Aragorn to study the new art and oil te techniques there. The journey took me far longer than I expected though. Now let's just say this. Yes, I have heard the Inquisition has had a difficult time with the many Jews and Muslims fleeing the country. I understand the edict of expulsion, but the Inquisition is brutal in its methods. Oh yeah, back in those days, the, after the Spanish Catholics conquered the entire Iberian Peninsula, chasing all the Moor Muslims away, some Muslims and Jews have still stayed, but later, now it's the... what year is it now? It's um, 1525, was it, right now? So by now, they all simply decided that, okay, we are going to kick all the remaining Muslims and Jews out, unless they are willing to convert to Christianity. And that's why most of the Muslims went to North Africa and the Ottoman Empire, as well as some of the Jews. But also, some of the Jews went to the Netherlands as well, because, if I understood correctly, Netherlands was quite tolerant towards many uh, Christian faiths, so they didn't care about too much whether you were Protestant or Catholic. And besides, the Netherlands really valued high-skilled craftsmen, which many Jewish people were. So that's why they also welcomed the Jews. But anyway, I got a bit sidetracked there. Anyway, the Inquisition is certainly enforcing the Crown's edict of expulsion, 
the streets were filled with uh, those leaving. Let's read more about this edict of expulsion. A writ issued in 1492 expelling all practicing Jews from Spain. The edict resulted in programs and persecution led by the Catholic Church, also called the Alhambra Decree. And head on this option. Oh, I wouldn't know. I have been traveling far and wide, enjoying all the unusual delights Europe has to offer. Ah, sure. I'll kindly ask you to refrain from telling part of the exploits, Andreas. <laughs> I knew he wouldn't be pleased. Of course, father. But I doubt my travels are why you have asked me here. Uh, what's, in, what's on your mind, father? In truth, I had hoped to discuss the rising tensions between the Abbey and townspeople. I would like to clarify the situation for you, Andreas. Please, Abbot, I'm all ears. Clarify? What exactly? Uh, of course, just like you clarified that Piero was guilty all those years ago. Yeah, screw him. This is precisely why I ask you here. I am trying to prevent another horrible situation like that. I believe you have only heard from one side of the issue, Andreas. Otto's little speeches about taxes don't account for the entire situation. Okay. Why demand such high taxes then, father? Oh, I picked up some food there. I <laughs> didn't even see what it was. Anyway, with the scriptorium closure, the taxes are necessary to make up for the lost income. Surely there's another option. Do you really need to raise taxes that much? Why not ask the bishop for help? Just because you decided to close this scriptorium doesn't mean the townsfolk should suffer. Oh, that's unfortunate. Well, why not ask the bishop for help? Ask the bishop? I have the authority to keep the abbey running, so I will in the way I see fit. I will not shame the abbey that, in that way. Brother Guy has gone over the expenses himself. Raising taxes is the best way to cover these costs. Of course it is. Hmm. But what about prohibiting the peasants from using the forest? That's a new restriction. Okay, so what do we have? Pheasant? I don't know what that is exactly. It looks like... I don't know. It doesn't look like a bread. It looks like meat. Lep... Lep cushion? That looks good. It looks like strawberry uh, pie. Oh, let's take whatever this is. It looks like a... A bread or something. The forest belongs to the Abbey, and the peasants have no right to use it. Legally, it's theft. It doesn't harm the Abbey to let the townsfolk pick up sticks. Why bring the issue up with me, then? You need to talk to the townsfolk, not me. I don't have a stake in this. Surely the Lord call calls for a spirit of graciousness and charity, Father. Cum arbor caret, cui cumque el... You are being a pedantic ass. Well, I guess we have to go with this because I don't know what that what this one means. Well, surely, surely the Lord calls for a spirit of graciousness and charity, Father. Neither is a spirit of the theft Christian, Andreas. Otto has been reading uh, from the twelve articles. As I hear it. The document appeals to the sovereignty God gave all mankind over the earth. The Twelve Articles. That drivel is Lutheran propaganda and defies the Church's authority to regulate the sinful and greedy nature of mankind. A shameful document for Klaus to print. Look at its effects on the townsfolk. I hear they will uh, continue their disobedience by collecting herbs on St. John's Eve. The whole town knows I have forbidden it. The matter is grave, and I will excommunicate anyone who defies my order. You would contempt the town over something so petty? That certainly creates an ultimatum. That's insane. Father Abbot, you don't have the authority to do that. The townsfolk live under the ecclesiastical jurisdiction of the Prince Bishop of Freising, not you. Andreas. You are hardly an expert on canon law. I assure you, I will have the support of the Prince Bishop. Well, we'll see about that, I guess. Remaining impartial will, uh, will be impossible as long as you are in town. 
support me in ending this foolish rebellion. You have a reputation in town, Andreas. You are a successful man, and the townsfolk believe they are like you. I would like you to convince the other townsfolk, the printer for example, that this uprising is not in their best interests. So that's why you called us here. The rest of the town will follow, and the peasants will have no chance to resist. We can end this peacefully. I don't want the town to come to harm. It is a precarious situation, but I understand your point of view, father. The peasants have genuine grievances. Why not talk with them and negotiate? I want no part in this either way. I don't have a stake in this, and I don't want to make enemies. The peasants are right, father. You have been too harsh on them. I won't help you. Damn your plan and damn you, father. Hmm. Why not just negotiate with them? I am a forgiving man, but Otto's stubbornness has challenged even me. Otto is past the point of talking, Andreas. That's why I'm begging you for help in the, in the matter. Please, take more time to think about it. I apologize, we must conclude for now. I must excuse myself, I am expected to lead a service at a uh, compliant tonight. Think on, uh, think on what we have discussed, Andreas. I trust you can find your way out. I will, Father Abbot. Good night. Well, obviously I would rather side with the peasants than with the... Return to the comments, okay. So, naturally I would rather side with the... With the peasants th rather than with the abbot. Rather than with the abbot. But if we could find a solution that satisfied, satisfies both parties, that would be ideal. But something tells me that reaching that kind of idealistic conclusion is not going to be easy. It may even be impossible, but we'll see. Okay, but now back to the comments. Let's see, is Kaspar still here? Or is he waiting, waiting for us at, our, at the guest house? Ah, oh, the festivities are still going strong. That's a big bonfire. Everyone seems to be having a fun time here. Hey, is that our hat? She must be the daughter of the bakers. Uh, the blonde, blonde haired girl who stole our hat at that one point. And... I see, I see that there's some patches on it. She's been using it a lot, I see. Ah, oh, Ursula is there. Isn't she cute? Carl? I don't know who that is. Oh, I don't remember. Taspar is there. <laughs> Werner, still. This bonfire is much simpler than the one in Nuremberg. Okay, so the same thing. And that Brigitte. Oh, that's uh, Martin's uh, wife, I see. Il Peter is here still. Everyone's having a good time. So, should we talk to Caspar then? <laughs> Master Andreas, look at how big the bonfire is. The decorations are so fancy. The St. John's Eve Festival is a big event for Sassin. I missed it last time I was here. Haven't you ever been to a festival like this, Caspar? The festivals in Nuremberg are much bigger. Tassings is quite tame comparatively. Well, it's a, sp uh, it, uh, it's a nice festival. Haven't you ever been to a festival like this, Caspar? No, I have never seen anything like this. Can I stay at the bonfire and see the costumes and watch them collect herbs, Master Muller? Please. Well, I don't think that you're going to watch watch them pick up the herbs illegally. Is a good idea. Alright, but follow along and don't get in their way. I'm too tired for the festival. I think I'll just turn in for the night. No, Caspar, it's late, and I don't want to risk the abbot's anger. Let's just head back and go to sleep. Um. I think that, it, I think that letting him go is going to be a risk. I mean, what if they catch him 
uh, watching the peasants uh, pick up herbs. Or, or what if he gets the brilliant idea of picking some herbs himself? He would, he would get into big trouble. But at the same time... Hmm. Well, it's well, it's it's getting late. Ah, oh, all right, fine. Sorry, Casper. Maybe in my second playthrough I will let you stay here. Let's just go to bed for now. Let's just go to bed for the day. And here we are. Anything to do down here before we go? I guess not. Let's just go up and just go to sleep. And just go to sleep. <coughs> Excuse me. My voice is a bit hoarse today as well, I see. Well, it's getting late. Should I get some rest? Well, I should get some rest even. Yeah, go to sleep. Oh, we are going to the dreamlands again. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now I have to do this again. What is the straightest path? Um. I, I guess it's this way. Come on. I don't un understand what's really the point of this uh, part of the game, really. Not that I'm complaining, I'm just wondering. Damn, it's a, it's a long ass way. Sabine. Hey, is that our wife? What is it? Let's just wait. Come home. Stop bothering me. I know, I know. Mm. I know. You know what? You want me home. You have been asking me for months. And for months you haven't answered. What am I to you now? An annoyance? A, a bother? A nuisance to be ignored while you lead another life in Barcelona? Was there ever an ounce of love in your heart for me? Woman, we were we were practically strangers when we got married or were engaged. Of course there was. There was never a this this was never about love, Sabine. As much as you had for me. Well about as much as you had for me, I would say. You can't help you can't help but be cruel, can you? I hate talking to you when you are like this. Mm, say nothing. Fine. Go back to your horse, the woman who make you happy. This house is so lonely without him. Stop. What is, who are they talking about? Your presence would only amplify the grief. Stop! Did they have a child and, and, and he passed away? Leave me alone. Leave me alone with the memory of him. Stop. Just leave me alone, just for one night. One night where I don't have to dream about him. Please. Thank you. Okay, so maybe they did have a child. I mean, they, they have been married for about seven years, so it would be strange if they never... if they never been, even tried to have a child. August. Oh, that looks kind of like us. Is that our son? Hello, August. What am I supposed to do? Just wait here with you? I know you aren't going to say anything. Hmm. 
You never say anything. I'm sorry, I couldn't do anything for you. I'm so tired, August. I suppose there's not much... There's not much uh, one can do against Blake. Ah, it was the Blake that killed him. Okay. Well, it's, it's not the 1300, so it wasn't the Black Blake. But I suppose Blake has always been a nuisance. In medieval times and early modern age. Do you get tired where you are? The last time I saw you, I said goodnight to you. I couldn't come to the bed, so I stood in the doorway. I just stood in the dark. You didn't say anything back, so I, so I said it again. I don't know how long I stood there. Just waiting for you to say goodnight. You still look the same age to me. I wonder if I ever forget for your face. Do I remember your mother as she is? I remember loving her. Or, or am I just thinking of some perversion of Daniel's portrait? Daniel's portrait, I'm not sure what he's referring to. Maybe some famous painters. I remember loving her. Well, let's say that. Can you ever picture someone clearly if you love them? Can you ever picture someone clearly if you hate them? Well, let's just say this. Can you ever picture someone clearly if you love them? I loved you, little boy. I wish I didn't. I loved you so much. Sometimes I wish I could die so I wouldn't feel it anymore. But I can't. So I retrace my steps every night. And I find my way back to her. Back to you. I love you, August. Good night. That was very... That was very touching. So sad. Okay, we are finally here. Yo, things have changed around here. What happened to this place? Where is uh, Prester John? And what, what's with all these fools here? And where are Socrates and Saint Crobian? Crobian wasn't on the ship of fools. What was her name again? Melensa Celonia. Won't you answer me? Melensolia. No thought no thoughts for Beatrice. Oh that was her I was I was thinking that that's not that was that that wasn't her name. This must be someone else. You are Beatrice, aren't you? Once. Okay, so it is the same person but changed her name. I was a voice of caution, of prudence. And now more and less than caution, the ache of doubt that stiffens into paralysis, paralysis that uh, breeds despair. Me melan melancholia, melancholia. How however you spell that? What happened to you? What happened? To, what happened to the others? What happens to you happens to us. The foundations of this city are still moored within the ocean of your mind. Its court does not rule your mind. Your mind rules the court. Oh, I see. Once reason, curiosity and the foolishness of youth had dwelt under the ages of your intellect. I am all that remains. The, mel the melancholy of life's autumn. But it is only June. Mm, is that it then? How did it come to this? You have turned your gaze to your own dark center. You know the causes of your own life. You know how the choices you have made have brought you here. What am I supposed to do about it now? Change your life. Wait, I shouldn't be here. I needed to help someone. Is Caspar still asleep? 
Well, we kind of know who he is. Ah, so your thoughts aren't entirely turned inward. There is still something in you that cares for others in spite of your melancholy. Perhaps there is still... Perhaps there is still hope for us. Wake up, Andreas. Where is Caspar? <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice again. Chapter 5. St. John's Eve. Find Caspar. Okay, so he's... He's gone missing. Hopefully no one has snatched him or kidnapped him. But then again, if, if someone actually did come here and kidnapped him, we would have most likely woke, uh, woken up by then. But yeah, I'm gonna end this episode here. And in the next episode... Well, let's go and find Caspar, our apprentice. So, until then. Thank you for watching once again, and see you next time for more Pentiment.